Hello, and welcome to Smart Woman Read Romance, a book review podcast where we fangirl over all things romance. I'm Jessen. And I'm Juliette. And today we're going to be reviewing Magic Bleeds by Alona Andrews, the fourth book in their Kate Daniels series. But before we dive in, you already know the drill. We really want you to subscribe to our podcast. And also, if you could rate and review us, that would be amazing. It helps people find us. Juliet and I love getting feedback from our listeners, so follow us on our social media pages. You can find us at SWReadRom. And if you're looking for some extras, join our Patreon for access to exclusive giveaways, a look behind the scenes of our episodes, and exclusive content, including the monthly videos that we do Q&As and some fun games on. Special shout out to our patrons. We're so thankful for all of our patrons for supporting the podcast. Girls mean the world to us. We- all right. <laughs> so, what have we been doing? Okay, so I don't know how many people out there because the only people I know that really watch this is us <laughs> and, Me and you. my immediate <laughs> friends. Pretty much is I, I'm obsessed with the OA, which oh, is on yes. Netflix. It's a Netflix original. So good. Season two just came out recently. I've been waiting for it because <clears> the first <throat> season actually came out the same time that Stranger Things came out. Yeah, and Stranger Things is already about to release their third season, and so I was like, "Where the heck is season two of?" OA. I'm like, mm-hmm. where is it? I'm obsessed with it. The first night that I started watching season two, I got up to episode <laughs> seven. First <gasps> night. Yeah, I I knew something was up because she told me she had started it like the night before and then the next Radio morning. Radio silence. Yes. Usually she's already sent me a few recordings by like 7 a.m. There's like nothing. I'm like, oh, what's up? Why, Jason, are you there? Did you stay up late watching Sleep a certain deprived. Netflix show? Like- I literally have, I have the, te- the vo- uh, it's, I think it's actually text on uh, Facebook Messenger. And I was like, I'm only going to watch one more episode to do it. Lies. She's Lies. such a liar. Guys, I think that it's so amazing. It's weird. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Like the first season, it's weird, but I like weird. And I was like, God, yeah. this is such amazing writing. And the was- actors were amazing. It's just Jason Isaacs in there. Y'all know how I feel about oh, Jason yes. Isaacs. I already talked about how I was crushing on him for so that good. Peter Pan live action. He was I know. delicious. But, but I know, I remember when Kevin and I first saw it, we're like, the, oh, hey, we watched, we watched like part of the first episode. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, I was like, yeah, and like, I, what's set going it, on? I set it aside. I'm like, well, well, no, I don't know if this is for us. And then Jess and I started watching. She's like, no, go back. And so we did. And as soon as we got through the end of episode one, I'm like, holy shit, this it's, is amazing. It's like a mind We binged fuck. the it's entire crazy. thing. It is awesome. I can't wait to watch the new I've season. Watched, I've watched the season one multiple, multiple times. Yeah. Season two, I was waiting for this weekend to continue it because I'm like, I needed to mentally prepare myself because <laughs> uh, I think I read like a interview with Britt Marling, who's the person who plays Prairie, who's the main mm-hmm. character on OA. I think she said it's planned for like four or five parts, like four or five seasons. Like yeah. in her mind, that's how it's gonna oh, go wow. so <laughs> so hopefully netflix doesn't drop them because netflix is dropping things like flies yeah. and i really love them so and much see, and i want the ending to that story you know definitely and it left on such a cliffhanger at the season, end of season one left one. on a major cliffhanger and i was like no season two i'm i'm probably expecting it to do a major cliffhanger but i don't know mm. yet so we'll see we'll see how that's yeah and that's the stranger do. things new trailer came out which is yes. freaking awesome the little kitties are all grown up it's amazing i love it like all, all of them are so cute they are and like how how did they find great child actors? I find that I don't hiring know. child actors are so hard. Mm-hmm. It's just like uh, I don't know. They they hit a gold mine. They really These did. Kids are awesome. All of them are amazing. They Everyone, are. Dustin, favorite, yeah. freaking you know favorite. What else, uh, we I binge watched. Kevin, I binge watched um, last weekend. I think was the Umbrella Academy. I that? saw the trailer to oh that one. Oh my gosh, y'all. It that is one looks so like another like kind of like up my alley weird kind of thing. It's sci-fi, you know? total weirdness. Like it's like super. It's like cross between like superpowers comic because it is a comic book yeah like my son I, jacob yeah. mm-hmm. jacob had read the whole thing is like oh my god mom it's so good yeah. <laughs> so i was like okay Jake. yeah so it, it's awesome there's some good shows guys if y'all like sci-fi and that cool kind of stuff y'all should you know give it a try this podcast is not uh supported by netflix <laughs> just like you know, sponsored by this is not sponsored by netflix sponsored by swear. netflix <laughs> Yeah, all right fine. guys i guess enough about us we got to talk about magic bleeds because yeah. there's a lot to talk about so juliet's gonna get us started off all right okay guys so this is a single pov urban fantasy paranormal romance where the uber talented husband and wife writing duo alona andrews combine fascinating elements of various mythologies with the story of kate daniels a sword wielding loner who is a magnet for trouble 
Things between Kate and Curran, yum, the beast lord of the pack, are about to reach a boiling point, but can they first save Atlanta from its latest threat? The heat level is pretty tame, you guys, which I find typical in paranormal romance series that focus on a single character's journey. Yeah, I think that, and this is kind of like, originally we were going to review book three, like this is what I had. I had book three, Magic Strikes, listed as the episode that we were going to do. Yeah. Um, She read book three, immediately went to book four. She's like, I love both of them. Like, well, which one do you want to do? We ultimately (laughs) picked this one because this is kind of where Kate and Kern's relationship really starts to like step it up a notch because, and I do find in paranormal romances that follow the same couple, Mm -hmm. it's a longer time to get to them actually like, you know, getting to the couple-y part. Yeah, or the the series this long for sure. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. A long 10 book series. And so this was the book where we have the most kind of romance elements. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like there's more like the ratio of previous books was kind of just like flirting, Um, (laughs) mostly antagonistic. They're like, you know, frenemies. Yes. And so this, this book, we have a little bit, we have a little bit more romance in there. Oh oh, yeah. We get to that level. So that's why, that's why, um, yeah, I had to (laughs) literally bribe Juliet to read this series because I knew she would love it. And we had read the first book, Long time ago, we're mm-hmm. kind of like, meh. It was a lot of info up in the first book, not right, going to lie. Right, And I made her a spreadsheet to get everything straight once I was, like, all <laughs> up in it. And I was like, look, here's – I'm going to help you because you need to read it. <laughs> yeah, she went back and read the whole series and, like, oh, my God, Juliet, you've got to go back. And yeah. Like, okay. And so, so I basically bribed her to read it, and now she's like, I love it. Yeah, so, I really ha-ha, <laughs> I win. Justin wins again. Oh, my God. Stop it. <laughs> so how's it feel to finally be on board the Alona Andrews tra- train? cow. Like, I honestly can say that they're, this is, they're my favorite paranormal author. I mean, it's, I say they, you know, because it's a, a dual team. Yeah, but Gordon and Alona. Yeah, it, I just, it just everything is so balanced, you know. I, I don't know. It's weird. And I find, especially in the Kate Daniel series, because we've all already reviewed, um, the first book in their Hidden Legacy series, Burn For Me, Burn that's for me. episode eight. Oh. It's amazing. It's a completely so different vibe from Kate Daniels, but equally as compelling. But I find that Kate Daniels, I freak out at the amount of mythology that is included in here. Mm-hmm. They And they don't just stick to like one, like Greek, which is most commonly mentioned right. in Roman or Greek mythology. Several they mythologies. Do, they do. They go into all kinds of religions. It's like amazing. And in a way that's so interesting and crazy. And I'm just like... The research. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. These I mean, you're, you're riveted because it's just, it's amazing. So, yes. I I've, agree. I've learned so much from this series, honestly. I've Googled a fuck ton after reading this series. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like completely obsessed with their storytelling mm-hmm. abilities because I find that they have a crazy talent at developing nuanced, compelling relationships. Not only between our main characters, but between other characters. Like, if I tried to list every single character that we have met in the first four books, it's so long. It's so long. But they are all so vibrant. Mm -hmm. And so, you know so much about them. They're they're their their own person. really come to care about them. It's amazing. Like, the characterizations are so nuanced and crazy. Mm -hmm. I just find... In a book where you're caring about 10 plus characters, that's insane to me. <laughs> right. I mean, exactly. seriously. I it's mean, true. how can characters be that fleshed out? But it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about our main characters first. We have Kate, who's trained to be a warrior since she was a child. Kate has one purpose drilled into her by her mentor and adoptive father. Keep your identity a secret until you're ready to take on Roland. A man who is half legend, half God, the person who killed Kate's mom and Kate's biological father. (laughs) Then there is Curran, the thorn in Kate's side and the leader (laughs) of the largest shapeshifter pack in North America. He's arrogant, self-assured, and loves to get under Kate's skin. Their relationship took a turn for romance when he rescued her from the Rakshas in Magic Strikes, Mm -hmm. book three. 
Where will it lead, though? <laughs> we will find out in this book. This is why we're showing. I know. <laughs> okay, so oh, so now we're moving. Obviously, into we have a lot. We have a lot to cover because yeah. we're going to do a little bit of background in our spoiler section just to keep people up to date. We're going to explain the different kind of you know Some of the factions. World yes, exactly. Yeah. In our spoiler section, so if you've not read this book, we're going to spoil the fuck out of it, <laughs> and also uh, from the first three books too. So. Go read those yes, books and then come back. It, yeah, give it a try, guys. Trust it's us. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, entering awesome. the spoiler section. Bye bye. All right, we're in the spoiler <laughs> section, and you know what? We have to start off with the showdown, <laughs> the showdown baby. Hell yeah! It's like it's so fun. Okay, I have it my scene. Awesome. I know your scene. I know it. You know why? Because <laughs> she wouldn't shut up about this I know. scene. I know what it is. I- I know you know it. It's like she's obsessed with this scene. <laughs> you biatch. You know. She gets to go first. It's her turn to go first. And so I'll do mine yeah. after. Oh, my God. But okay, it's so. con- my scene's kind of connected to her scene. So it's very interesting. So anyway, go with your scene. You All crazy right. person. I know. Okay. You can stop giggling already. All right. So my showdown scene, I can't even say it because I know you're going to laugh, is the claiming scene. The claiming scene. <laughs> but it's everything that's sort of leading up to it. It from where Saman and her are at that part, that dinner place, whatever, yes. that, that restaurant. The setup to make Kern jealous, basically. Yes. And it was hilarious. And I like Saman. I know he's a weirdest freaking character and we don't know mm-hmm. all of his motives, mm-hmm. but he cracks me up. Oh, no. It's like, if, if he wasn't in the story, would it be the same? It's no, not at all. so interesting. So he's kind of lecherous with Kate. He's okay. very lecherous. Okay, yeah, perfect. He's very lecherous. Okay. Perfect. But he brings her all dolled up to this restaurant and he's just getting sloshed and she's like what is wrong with him why is he drinking so much well in comes Curran and his whole group step yeah, in it, they're, they're having like a kind of like Some the biggest of, of the bad meeting. yeah exactly yeah. a pack meeting and um immediately Curran's like ready to like kill same in. like zoned in like why because they had just kind of rekindled gotten the yes. same page again yes. and all of a sudden here's kate on looking a dressed up she she never dressed up yes. she's like a merc like you don't dress up and right. she's like dolled up with this asshole she looks beautiful and sexy and yes. she's like you know drinking and having a good time with salmon uh no he <laughs> will have none that's of what Curran sees which that's she's what really sees. doing right. is like being like bodyguard for him and basically she needs to go out on a date because she needs his lab equipment <laughs> that's right. that's what her purpose is so fortunately jim and all of them kind of corral him into the meeting before he rips salmon's head off mm-hmm. in the restaurant and she's like we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go we gotta yeah, get out of here so exactly. she ushers salmon who's still like what's wrong you know? it's fine <laughs> oh, it's he can't fine. do anything he'll, we're he'll, in he public won't do anything we're in public he can't do anything <laughs> to me and they get down to the parking lot and i love how she says she feels like eyes on the back mm-hmm. of her skull she turns around and says kern's eyes glowed with gold he shrugged off his leather jacket grabbed the neck of his turtleneck with both hands and ripped it in half because he's about to shift, baby, and he is coming after yeah. them. They're in a oh, car. My God. And he's in warrior form yes. chasing them. It was he's like leaping over buildings, following them. It is the it was intensely sexy the whole chase to when he I think gets my favorite her. part of the whole thing with her with the claiming scene in that scene was whenever he comes in there and he's just mm-hmm. he's so he's so enraged about he's the whole so worked thing. Up. And he's and he's like, Where is he? And she's like underneath the bed and he and flips it. He flips the bed and like breaks <laughs> the bed there. like across like, the room. Like you idiot, why would he be <laughs> why would in here? He be here? <laughs> Like, you're such he, has, an idiot. he doesn't have a death wish, but he's just in like primal alpha yes, mode. Yes, and also like, you're mine. I like how Kate. You know. Kate's not a wallflower. She's no. not a delicate wilting flower. She oh, yes. kicks him upside the head. She's like, like so hard. Ring your bell. She's like, ring your bell, baby. <laughs> yes. oh. I just love their this relationship. This whole scene was awesome. Oh, it's so, beautiful. and it was perfect for because Kate beautiful. is really alpha too. So very much so. You know, I thought it was an awesome way for them to clash finally come together, and finally have sex, yeah. which was it amazing. was beautiful. It was beautiful. I. Yes. That's Her scene's scene. amazing. <laughs> so my showdown scene, it leads up to this scene. <laughs> this was Kate and Curran had kind of had like a little, not falling out, but misunderstanding. And once she realized, oh, yeah. once she realized what the full story was, she decides to play on his level <laughs> since he's a shapeshifter. Oh, oh my gosh, I know you're going. Since he's a shapeshifter, they have kind of like some courting rituals. And since he's a lion, he's a cat shapeshifter. Mm-hmm. And each like kind of like species kind of has their own thing. Well, cats try to be sneaky, try to like get in the other's territory and like move around and right. sneak back out. Right. So Kate's like, 
calls into a favor to Jim, which is the security chief and also like Kern's <laughs> right hand man. Is like, you owe me a favor for that time that we were, you know, doing whatever for the guild. Yeah. She goes to the she goes to the keep. She goes to Kern's quarters. He has like the whole top floor. She sees the guest room. Which <laughs> is the slut shack. The slut hut. <laughs> yes. She sees the guest room. It has like, it's like all white and dainty and sound it's system, so champagne, like stocked yeah. in there. And, 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 and she's like, where the fuck is Barbie? And then yeah. she's like, and then she takes out this flaming sword that she borrowed from the Greek god Thanatos, the god of death. <laughs> and it's a flaming sword. And they're like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm nailing the bimbo room shut. The slut hut. The slut it's hut. It's great. Awesome. That is an awesome. Oh my it's, god. It it was it was honestly amazing. Then she also welds his bench press. Um, she welds the bar <laughs> to it. Then she dumps catnip, catnip. on his bed. That's and right. he calls her at 2 a.m. whenever he gets back to the keep and he is furious. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And then she's like, in her head, she's like, think, Kern, think, think what I did. Like, I'm so sorry. I snuck into your territory yes. and I and, and I, I made myself at home. all over your bed. And she's like, come on, you idiot. Like, Think Catch about what I'm doing. Yeah. And like, she's like, oh, he doesn't get it. She's like, fine, you're dumb, whatever. And he's mm-hmm. like, you're going to come clean up the catnip uh, naked. And she's like, in your dreams. And then she hangs up <laughs> and she talks to her attack poodle. And she's like, I'm in love with an idiot. And it's just like, great. <laughs> it is. It's just that a fun is, scene. Oh this gosh. is pretty much their relationship in a nutshell. This kind yeah. of antagonistic push and pull. Yeah. Funny. But it's just like, they're both so alpha. They both yes. can't back down. But there's They're so much good stuff. So in this complimentary. One. I love it's it. amazing. It's this, so good. I can gush about the amazingness of this book all night, but you know what? We have a lot to get through. <laughs> yeah, let's get to the breakdown. Come <laughs> so on, we're gonna do a little bit of background for you. I'll do it. We're yes. gonna do some settings. So it's Atlanta, Georgia, almost kind of like a magic apocalypse yeah, happened. Yeah. And there's a history in the history of the world in this series where there's a pendulum swing between the world being more in tune with magic for hundreds of years and then being more in tune with technology for the next few hundred years. Well, presently, the balance is, like, clashed and, like, magic and technology are fighting on a daily basis to, like, have a hold in the world. So the um, on it's, it's pretty much unpredictable during the day. Magic could be turned on that day. Mm-hmm. And you have to use like fey lanterns. Your wards are going to work. But then in the middle of the day, it could switch to technology. And all of a sudden your phones work, your guns yeah. work, all the stuff really that cool. are man-made. And you're like, like your cars have to have like a water engine <clears throat> and then a regular engine. It's very, very interesting the way that she built this world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically in the book, you'll see the tech is up, magic's up, and that's what it's talking about. Yeah. Magic also erodes a lot of the buildings created during tech time, so that's why the city is, like, in half ruins, right. and, like, new buildings are very just, like, functional, not, like, nothing's really pretty, you it know It feels very saying? apocalyptic. Right, very apocalyptic world. Then we have our big players. The big one to know about is Roland. He... As the leader of the people, and the people, this is their mysterious figurehead. To mm-hmm. most, he is a myth. To most people, don't really know about him because he works in the background. Mm-hmm. But this is Kate talking, and he says, to me, he was a target. He was also my biological father. Mm. <laughs> and events that happened in the third book, they had – Almost like a gladiatorial game. Yes, it was it's called so the Midnight cool. Games. It was really cool. And her identity kind of got – out a little yeah. bit, but only to two select people who knew what it meant. Right. So what happens is Kate <clears throat> basically sacrificed herself in these games, um, stabbed herself with this magical sword so that it wouldn't be able to – the power of the sword wouldn't be able to be used. Right. And Against she dissolved the sword. The sword is made of Roland's blood. Nobody can control Roland's blood except a family member. Right, who and has so his blood. Andrea, <laughs> who is the weapons master and Kate's best friend, she knew what that meant. She was like, mm-hmm. you destroy that sword. Holy fucking shit. Are you his daughter? Yeah. She's like, yes. Don't tell. And then also Hugh DeAmbry, who is Roland's warlord, who was there. And but he's keeping quiet throughout this whole novel. Yeah, we he's don't just see kind of him like watching and stuff. He's just like waiting, cool. biding his time. Right. So Roland has a history with his kids. Um, he has kids throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia. Mm-hmm. And he ends up by killing all of them because <laughs> he breeds really powerful kids. Mm-hmm. And they all end up by turning on him. And so Kate. Kate was the one that got away. Her mom smuggled her out and even sacrificed herself so that Kate could get away with Voron, which is Voron was his 
um, previous warlord. Yeah, so kind Kate of was her adoptive. Kate father. was raised by Voron. Mm-hmm. He was not a kind fellow. I've got no, to say, no. He was, you know, drilled Warren to her. The things that he put her through to make her like a hardened individual are like crazy. Like he sent an assassin after her whenever she was ten. Yeah, and then after she made her first kill, like right after, he sent another person. Like right after, and they talk about it in this book. The whole goal is for Kate to be strong to kill Roland because yeah. Roland he likes to think of himself as this like benevolent father figure who he conquers city be- cities because he has the know-how and the <clears throat> knowledge to make this city thriving and better mm-hmm. but he thinks that if half the population dies almost like Thanos in a way yes. if half if half the pop- population dies and the other half thrives, thrives. that's okay so and that's Thanos. basically that's basically what his mentality is mm-hmm. then we have Greg we kind of learned about Greg in the first novel, also just kind of a person in um, Kate's life, kind of another father figure. He used to work with the Order, and the Order is one of the factions that you'll hear about throughout this novel. Almost kind of like a police force. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's three kind of police forces. There's like the actual police force, the Guild, and the Order. Greg used to work for the Order. He was a knight. If you're a member of the Order, you make it to knight status. So right now, Kate is actually working for the Order. But she doesn't have a knight status, but she almost has like special privileges just mm-hmm. because she gets shit done. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. She's good. Then we have the pack, which Kern is a leader of, and <laughs> it's like the largest pack in like North America. Yeah, in the US. There's like thousands of shapeshifters under Kern's control. And what makes Kern's pack so special is that it's not one species, it's multiple species. And just they usually don't get along like cats, right. wolves. Right. But um, he, he kind of. He hammered them together. together. Like yes. he he has a background as the first. It's like almost like he's like a native shapeshifter. Like he can tr- trace his ancestry back to like original, like an original ancestor. Right. So Kern's very powerful. Then we have the people. The people is Roland's kind of faction. And I find the people fascinating. So there's vampires in this book, but they're vampires as I've never seen them before. <laughs> vampires are actually kind of um they're not very sentient they don't have like rational thought right. they're basically they're like they puppets. rampagers like if they if they're not piloted mm-hmm. by a necromancer also known as a journeyman they just rampage and kill everything but yeah. since there's really nothing up there they can be piloted by the people they're necromancers they're called journeymen and um like puppet monsters yes, you can talk through them yeah, you can use it's them wild. it's crazy it's really cool so kate likes to steer clear of them because that's her father's you know his his, his <laughs> baby his pet yes. project his foothold in the world so she kind of steers clear <laughs> of them so those are our main factions and that's all we're going to say about it now we're going to get into the actual plot of the book in the okay. beginning i love how this one begins <laughs> So it opens with Kate holding a menu written by Curran. And it's the, it's this is the night that they have scheduled for their quote unquote naked dinner. Mm-hmm. And Kate is watching the time because she lost a bet and Curran um her repayment of that is to cook him dinner, which has a yeah, special but tell meaning. Them the meaning of what special, feeding him. It means. has a special meaning for shapeshifters. Because whenever shapeshifters feed another person shapeshifter usually shapeshifters it means that you're like taking care of them and like you're declaring yourself because it means like i can take care of you it's like a sign yes so he secretly has fed kate before like handed her bowls of soup but (laughs) now she she knew about the whole dinner thing Mm -hmm. exactly and so they committed kind of they were dancing around each other in the third book and Mm -hmm. flirting and stuff and kern's ready to take this for the next step this is a big thing and she cooked a like she cooked steaks and she like cooked pies she cooked like all kinds of sides she was ready she was so ready in savannah in savannah yeah Yeah. because she has two she has her main house which was voron's Mm -hmm. house in savannah she also has an apartment in the city which was greg's in atlanta so what she – yeah, he's late. He's late and she is pissed. She waits for three hours. She calls the keep only to be told that he is, quote, busy, too busy to talk to you right now. In the future, please go through proper channels and direct all of your concerns to Jim, our security chief. 
And Kate is like, what I know. the fuck? She's Are you waited three me? months. She's waited three months yes. for this date because he literally is that busy that he's like, mm-hmm. okay, I need a clear schedule for this. Like, cause he was planning, you know, dinner and like sex all night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> dinner and then you're mine. And then we finally do this. <laughs> exactly. So she thinks about marching to the keep and giving him a piece of her mind. Yeah. Like, completely Kate Daniels move, but decides that it would reveal too much about how much, how much him standing her up affected her. Like mm-hmm. she, she kind of disguises it, it as she doesn't want to create like any problems between the order and the pack. But her real reason is that she doesn't want to tell him or let it be known that this really bothered her. A lot. Right. So we get a little bit background on how Kate, was raised. This is a quote from Kate, and it says, For years, first my father, which she's referring to Voron, Mm -hmm. and then my guardian Greg had warned me to stay away from human relationships. Friends and lovers only brought you trouble. My existence had a purpose, and that purpose in my blood left no room for anything else. I had ignored the warnings of the two dead men and dropped my shields. It was time to suck it up and pay for it. I'd believed him. Talking about Curran. He was supposed to be different, to be more. When hope broke, it hurt. Mine was a very big, very desperate hope, and it hurt like a son of a bitch. I so know. she's oh. she's really wounded by this. I like, know, very it hurts wounded. so bad because it's just like I, I would react exactly like her. Yeah. I would have been furious. So she too. dumps all the food and then she decides yeah, to go to Atlanta. She's like, Fuck this, I'm going back yeah. to Atlanta. So three weeks later, Kate is currently working at the order, even though she isn't really a knight. Mm-hmm. She receives an emergency petition for aid at the Steel Horse, which is a bar and it has been attacked so she gets there and the person that was attacked and killed looks diseased like his Mm -hmm. nose is falling off and then like the like slime is like crawling across the floor it's like sentient which is Mm -hmm. very very weird so she clears everyone out of the area the bar and performs incantations to contain it behind layers of wards biohazard arrives which they take care of stuff like this and says it was like a sentient version of syphilis Mm -hmm. and kate questions the employees and patrons about the person who attacked joshua who's the person who died and turned into walking talking syphilis disease and gets a vague description of very tall cloaked with a hood kept up like it could be any right (laughs) A tall like, cloaked figure. Yes, exactly. That's what he looked like. Like someone says in Biohazard, like, don't tell me the cloak guy did it. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Like. So one of the employees remembers hearing the cloaked person ask Joshua, do you want to be a god? I have room for two more. Mm-hmm. So dun, dun, dun. I love yes. the way that she layers the story. Yes. I love the way that she gives yeah. us a little tidbit and that's all. So Bio- Biohazard labels this attacker as a Mary after typhoid Mary. And mm-hmm. like it's a person who controls diseases. So the case gets the label, the Steel Mary, and that's how we'll refer to the attacker from now on. Right. Kate also discovers a huge matted black dog that ran from the attacker He's and so hid in the sword room. <laughs> and he and she's like, at first, she's like, oh my God, it has to be a Doberman. Like, this yes. thing is huge. Some scary it's like, you know, so scary, sort of whatever. And then later on, people are like, no, it's a poodle. It's a poodle. <laughs> it's she's a like, big can't poodle. Be, it can't be a poodle. Like, it's, so it's, it's vicious. Cute. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <sighs> so the thing. The thing that I like most about Kate is that she was trained not to form attachments, which we've talked about, but she's such an empathetic character that she can't help but take in the strays, just like this dog. She took in, in book two, Julie, who is her ward. She was an orphan. She's like an 11-year-old orphan. She took her in. She Mm -hmm. protected Andrea when Andrea was going through shit, and the but in book two, she was- She's an innately compassionate character. She is. From all the stuff that she's been through, it's amazing how she turned out so empathetic. And she appears to be just this badass- Yes, front. and she likes people to think that yes. she's such a badass, but she will sacrifice herself again and again for these yes. people. Even she people, does. even people who don't appreciate her, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I it think is that crazy. I think that Kate might be my favorite heroine that Elona Andrews has written. I love Nevada Baylor so much, mm-hmm. but I think that Kate is just well, and you've been with something. Kate longer. Yes, and she just <laughs> oh my god, she's amazing. She's amazing. Yes. So after this big attack, all the big players in Atlanta are calling Kate, like needing advice, like what's going on mm-hmm. with this. Jim says that Joshua, that's the guy who was killed, was a shapeshifter, and other shapeshifters at the bar felt so terrified that they ran and are missing. So now they feel like. You know, is this attack on shapeshifters? Yeah, like, like what's, what's going, going on? on? Like, we're you know? involved too. Yes. We also have Gastek, who is one another one of Kate's frenemies, 
tells her that two cloak figures attack the casino. The casino is owned by the people. It's the people's home base. Yeah, okay. that's where they like keep all their vampires. They call it a stable. All their right. journeymen work right. there. But it is Even, also it's also a casino, a casino, it's an, an actual, actual casino. casino. That's so funny. Like in the middle of the apocalypse, people still got to gamble. Yeah, you know? like, man. Sorry, the party does not stop. That would be. It's probably it feels like Louisiana. Like yeah, I feel you like can't close the casino. And also, it's very <laughs> shrewd of them because, of course, people need entertainment they do. even during an apocalypse. I and agree. Gas- and gas tech is like we even have like a place for kids to go because we need to yeah. separate the kids from their parents to separate the money from their parents I as well. I actually love this that Alona Andrews did this because it just shows because it is so true even in an apocalypse people aren't just going to be fighting and you know all day long Mm-mm. like they need something to live for yeah. you know what I mean so it's so really cool. I, I really like that addition too. Yes. And so the guild also calls the order to report an attack. Yeah, and the guild is like a group of mercenaries. They're paid to solve problems. Like the right. order does it for free, but you can't dictate like the terms of service. Like right. they, they will just handle it. And the guild, they're paid and you can like specify how it happens, whatever. But you know, it's going to cost you a pretty penny to hire the guild. Right. And so when they get to when they get to where this attack took place, Solomon Red, who is the founder of the guild, um, is dead. And they're like, he's like staked into like a, yeah, uh, like they like call him like a butterfly, like yes. a butterfly collection added to, the, and like there's a pattern because Joshua was also pinned up he against was also the wall. Pinned. So it's a very, the very clear pattern. Yes. And it seems by connected. somebody very powerful, very strong mm-hmm. who's doing this, right? So he's dead and another disease um, needs to be contained. So it's like, Every attack is showing some sort of like disease is erupting from the, mm-hmm. you know, Yeah, this one was like cholera and Kate has to contain right. it with the help of somebody else from the guild. So Kate interviews some witnesses there and this is what we find out that um, Steel Mary seems to know when a magic wave is coming. Yeah, like, like it right works right off after, of a ma- Yes. Like right after she pins Solomon Red, a magic wave happens. Comes through. Yes, it's like it's, they, they can tell. They can tell when this is happening. Yes, and it's like, impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, they pulled Solomon's essence out of him, like, like basically his magic and yeah. his soul, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, all mm-hmm. out of him when the attack took place. Um, and then we also get um, – the same description of the person, the perp, who's actually mm-hmm. doing the cloaked figure. The cloaked figure. <laughs> the cloaked figure. But we get a little bit more. Um, one of the mercs, her name, uh, Vera, says it was a woman, not a man. So this is very confusing. Yeah, very interesting very that one interesting. person saying that. Everyone so, else no. is like, no, it's a man. The like, hands, no. man hands. Yeah, like, like man hands. Like, hell no. no. I saw a, the face. It's yes, a woman. This you know? person is described as being like 6'6". Six, six. It's very unusual to see a 6'6 six, six woman. Super tall. And so it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, so everybody's but, like disagreeing. Yeah, but in the long run, Ivar is right. Yeah. It is a woman. Yeah. It is a woman, which yeah. I find f- fascinating. It's I know. And I it was, it. I was like so intrigued. I was like. What? <laughs> like, this? what's going on? Yeah, it's so fun. Right. So while she's still at the guild, Jim and Curran show up. <laughs> they arrive. <laughs> she, just who she wants to yes, see. Yes. And this is, of course, she's not. She's been avoiding him for three weeks. Yes. She's not si- talked to him since the non, since standing up the, for the dinner. Yeah. Right. The naked they haven't dinner. had any contact. Yes. Um, they formally, they arrived to formally offer the order, the assistance of the pack on the case. <laughs> I love this, this scene. Great. so funny. Okay. So I have to share with y'all this thing. Kate hilariously follows the orders that about addressing all concerns to Jim instead of Curran. Okay. Like so to a T. Her. This is yes. what she was told on the phone. Yes. And so she's like, I'm going to be yeah. petty. They told me. And this is how that it's going to go. Everything needs to go through Jim. So I'm going through fucking Jim. Yeah. Okay. So that's how she's acting. She's yeah. ignoring she's, Curran she's, and just talking to Jim. It's great. <laughs> and so Curran is standing there and she's speaking to Jim and she's like, please relay my greetings to the Beast Lord. I appreciate his willingness to alter his extremely busy schedule and make an appearance. Curran showed no emotion, no gloating, no anger, nothing at all. Jim looked at me, looked at Curran, looked back at me again. Kate says, hi. He said, finally, I'm ecstatic, Curran said. <laughs> so it's like so childish, but at the same time, and like, it was hilarious. She describes like the tension is ramping up yes. and shapeshifters react to high levels of like any kind of emotion. And so Jim's eyes are like turning gold because yeah. of the sparks that are just flying. Yeah, it's like, I can feel shit is getting started and I do not yeah, want to be in the like middle of this. Like a fight's going to happen. Like yeah. this is how it feels. But she's it's, still just like completely blocking him out. Like, yeah. no, shun, shunning you. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> like, why are you not talking to me? I, I'm totally shunning, shunning. 
It's great. <laughs> so Kate and Kern and Jim go into a private room to compare notes on their differing version of events on the naked dinner night. Yeah, because they have differing versions of what yes. went down. So Kate, you know, Kate's like, I cook dinner, I cook dinner, I put makeup on, I lotioned and landscaped. I Which love is all great. That. <laughs> yeah, like, like I was prepared, like, buddy. I stuff was gonna happen. Yes, like and you I didn't show up. Yeah, I was ready for you. And then you were a fucking no show, you know. But then Kern's like he was challenged by a bear that night and was getting patched up and showed up. He even after he got like mauled by a bear or whatever and yeah, got patched up. Yeah, he had up. like broken ribs and a dislocated yes. hip. Yes. He showed up four hours late to find Which the dinner Kate, was trash. Kate waited three hours. He she showed up four hours. hours. Yes. He got there too late and saw it was all trash and she wasn't at the Savannah house. Like she totally. She'd gone to Atlanta. Yeah, she'd left. She'd so. Gone. But here's the thing. Kate's not interested in his excuses because Kern really hurt her and made her look like a fool. And I have to say, mm-hmm. I totally agree. No, like whoever I get was in it. charge of the fucking phone, mm-hmm. you know. Well, there's like kind of like a thing because it's not made a wasn't big deal. Wasn't her dad's figure who told it, her that? Mahone. Mahone, yes. So Mahone is kind of like Curran's adoptive father. Right. And we get to see, especially in the next two novels, a little bit more of Mahone. And he really doesn't think. He really has almost like, he's kind of like the conservative person of like the group, the conservative right. alpha of the entire pack. He likes things done the old way. He doesn't want any modernization. Mm-hmm. So whenever Kern sets his eyes on Kate, Mahone's like, cool, but it'll pass. You really right. need to marry this like fling. this shapeshifter yeah. woman. She's not a you shapeshifter. Know? She's not one of us. So, so Mahone, and we do find out later that the phone call that Kate had put through mm-hmm. asking for Curran. It was, it was Went him. through Mahone. Mahone was like, it's not important. And Curran says later, oh, but it went through Mahone. He just thought that it wasn't important. Kind of dismisses it, not yeah. thinking that Mahone has any kind of like ulterior motives, quote unquote. But Mahone just like, he feels like. It's harmless, but just in case, let's not keep them together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He but just this, That's why I'm totally on Kate's side in this mm-hmm. instance. It's like, Curran, if you fucking had these feelings, you should have like, everybody should know. Yeah. You know, if I call, you're going to take my call or tell me what the hell's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I really felt like he was in the And I here. felt like, especially since Kate's the type of person who she was taught not to form attachments and right. relationships. This is very I feel hard like for her. her guarding herself a little mm-hmm. while longer, even after getting evidence that maybe it wasn't what it seemed to be. I feel mm-hmm. like it was still good for her to be cautious and not just being like, oh, well, what you say is true. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She's yeah. she's still guarding her heart. Yeah. And I respect her for I that. Do, I think it's good. Too. I think it's me good. Too. And I like it. I'm with Kate the whole time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so while they're still arguing about it, because you, they're not Kate and Kern if they're not just going back and forth. <laughs> No, it's I even love when dialogue. they finally have sex. It's yes, hilarious. exactly. So another attack happens on the guild while they're working. No, <laughs> a cloaked figure, otherwise <laughs> naked, cloaked figure, naked. It's not the Steel Mary. Mm-hmm. This is a water mage, and he goes after Jim and Curran. Like yeah. Curran shields Kate with his body. Like even as they're arguing, he legit protects Kate because yeah. shapeshifters have, you know, high regenerative properties. Mm-hmm. They can, you know, heal from crazy, crazy injuries. So he's protecting Kate. And, but during the fight, I really do love this part though too, because Kate's like, Hey, throw me. And he's like over or under. It's not a matter of, Hey, you sit this one out. It's like, no, yeah. I'm going to utilize all my tools. And yeah. Kate is a tool. Yeah. Kate is, Kate's a She's weapon. Strong. She's honed. Mm-hmm. You know, she doesn't need protecting, even though he wants to, he yeah. knows she has strength. She yeah. knows what, what she can do. So Kate eventually wounds the mage with her knife. And he, the mage, speaks with a female voice and says, <laughs> nice knife, before Kern breaks his neck. And Kate's like, what the fuck did you do? Like, I wanted to question this person. Like, mm-hmm. you just, like, got rid of it. So whenever a female voice comes out of this guy's, you know, head, <laughs> yeah, Kate knows that the man couldn't speak with a woman's voice the mm-hmm. way that way if he he only could do that if he was undead and the female was a navigator almost like the vampires but yes. this requires a very powerful ma- magic to do it to somebody who's not a vampire who is dead but is not a vampire yeah it's like a zombie yes sort of thing. so kern is interested in continuing the conversation but kate shuts it down <laughs> she says do you need me to draw you a chart you stood me up you made me think there was something between us you made me want things Things I thought I could never have. And then you crushed it. Don't come near me, Curran. Don't talk. We're done. Oh, my God. And I felt that. I felt that because she really did. She was, like, raised to be like, you will never 
have yeah. any and she like finally family took a nothing. chance. She was mm-hmm. finally going to take a chance. Exactly. So Kate takes the head of the undead ma- mage and performs a Dabal ritual to get a look at who the navigator was. Mm-hmm. The image revealed is her own face, which oh my God. turns out to be such an interesting twist. But at the time, honestly, the first time I read it, I was just like, oh, well, obviously it just didn't work. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. I was just like, whatever, it's fine. I was like, something is amiss here. I felt like we were like in Star Wars. It was where, so like, awesome. Luke Skywalker saw his face behind Darth Vader's mm-hmm. mask. You it know? was so cool. <laughs> So she talks to Andrea, who is her best friend. She's a member of the Order. Mm -hmm. She's also a secret beastkin, which she's a type of shapeshifter. We won't go all into that. But she's kind of in hiding in the Order. The Order's leader has, like, prejudice against shapeshifters. So she talks to Andrea about Roland's possible involvement because necromancy is kind of like their family thing. And that's kind of like what the people do. So she's like, maybe Roland's involved. Right. She also talks about her issues with Curran. And Andrea's (laughs) eventual advice is good advice. And she says, I know you'll tell me to fuck off, but I think Curran loves you, truly loves you. And I think you love him, Kate. That's rare. Think about it. If he really stood you up, why would he be pissed off about the whole thing? Mm. You can both be assholes of the first order. So don't let the (laughs) two of you throw it away. If you're going to walk away from it, at least walk away knowing the whole picture. So she's like, hey, investigate what he said. You know what I'm saying? So Kate decides to call her neighbor in Savannah to see if Kern really did go to the house and leave a note like he said. Yes, like he said he did. Then the neighbor's like, okay, I'll go check and I'll call you back. I'll leave a message if I can. Mm -hmm. So she gets an evidence box. She's at the order. She gets an evidence box sent by Savannah PD. Since the Steel Mary passed through there, there's like a record of like going through Miami and whatever. Right, right. So – um, there's a blank piece of parchment included in this evidence box. And the mm-hmm. test was said, they did like 20 plus tests on it. And it's revealed that it's a magic piece of parchment, but nobody can figure out like what it is. Right. There's no writing. Right. It's blank. Like, what is this? We cannot reveal anything. <laughs> there's so got to like, be hey, something It's on magic, there. but we don't know what it is. Here yeah. you go. <laughs> Here's your blank It's parchment. inconclusive. So she knows she needs um, a Simon. She's like, yeah, we really need to hire him. And Ted, the asshole, is like, fine, hire him. So she heads back to the guild to meet a Simon, and he's a polyform and a demigod, which is very cool. He changes his appearance, like, all the time, mm-hmm. and in his family history, he has Loki, which is <laughs> – I love that. I love that addition. It's great. I love his background. He it's is so fascinating fun. He's like an me. ice giant I in his, like, him. real form. Yeah. So he's <laughs> hired to help with the investigation. Besides his flat fee of $50,000, he wants a date with Kay. <laughs> and she would redu- yeah i'm sorry she reluctantly <laughs> agrees because i love because she day. has to yes. she needs his equipment yes his lab equipment <laughs> yeah his lab equipment yeah let's make that clear exactly <laughs> All right, so Kate gives the blank parchment to you, Simon. Is that how you pronounce it? Honestly, I was really, like, honestly, Simon. it's probably Sai. S A I is probably Simon. Honestly, I like say Sam Hain, but there's no H in there. So yeah, it's in my I head. <laughs> I literally, I just pass through these types right. of names that so I can't So we'll pronounce. go with Simon, uh, who will work on it. And then he performs a ritual that lets them watch the attack on Solomon Which Red. I thought was so cool. Yeah. Like, it's it. so cool. It's like we're seeing like, like a, a little hologram, flashback you know? hologram. Yeah, exactly. It's badass. I loved it. Um, Kate sees a brief glimpse of the Steel Mary under the cloak, dark eyes, olive complexion, and is definitely a woman. Yes. Definitely a woman. That's all she can see. Just yes. very brief glimpse. Yes. And she uses a power word, which is a whole really big deal to yes. extract Solomon's yes. essence. Power words are significant in this Very world. significant. You have to have a significant amount of magic. Like, you have to be a very magical being to, For, to be able to, to use one. Use one because what happens is, and we see this in book one, mm-hmm. to use a power word, you first have to own it. And what happens is, whenever you see a power word, it's like almost this pressure is created on your mind mm-hmm. until you can own it and you must overcome it because if it owns you, it'll kill you. So Kate owns like six of them already. Y'all, and each time, is so cool. it's so cool. It is so cool. And like cool. she said, the first time she's ever tried to own a power word, it almost kills her and she like lost like days, like blackout. And then, like, each time she gets a power word, it's no less painful, Mm -hmm. but she can withstand it more. And she, you know, she gets a little bit better at bouncing back from acquiring a power word. So this person just using a power word, it's like, okay, we've got a powerful being on our hands because nobody just has power words. Right. You don't just – exactly. And during this whole holographic, you know – 
whatever flashback, Kate catches a glimpse of another power word on the woman's arm and she has to fight to own it. Yeah. The whole process to go through owning the power word, she has to acquire it because right. yeah, she, once you see it, you have to own it or else it'll own you and kill you. Right. <laughs> so Kate's going through all this fucking right. shit in the middle all of the room. The all right. <laughs> so Simon now knows that Kate is strong enough to own power words and covers for her only because he likes to be the one with all the information. I love that. He's like, I'll protect you, but hmm. yeah, I'm going to keep the, I'm going to store <laughs> this because I need more info about you and what I you can know. do. I think of him as being like, I love his, when he takes the look of uh, like the foppish guy, Oh you know, God. Yeah, the older has... foppish guy. He's just like, so like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like aristocratic almost. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> it's just awesome. He's, he's a very interesting character. So he tells her that when she was in the process of owning the words, he saw hundreds of words written in dark ink on her skin. Dun, dun, this dun. Is fucking amazing. Listen, since I've read all the books, this is important. It comes up in later books, and I'm not saying it comes up in the next book. It comes up in later yeah. books. And I love the breadcrumbs. I'm, I'm going to finish I love the, the breadcrumbs. I'm going to finish the series after this episode. It's amazing. You know. It's amazing. Because I haven't finished yet, y'all, and I've got to get to the, I've got to get to it's, the end. Oh, it's addicting. I kept getting distracted by all these other wrecks and stuff. We have so many wrecks through the know. podcast now. <laughs> all right. So when she gets home, her neighbor in Savannah says there was indeed a note on her door that says, I'm here. You're not. Call me. She so waited he, another hour. I yes. mean, three hours is a long time to wait. I would that have been a pissed off too. Time. I would have gone to the bar and drowned my sorrows. After three, I mean, three hours, I would have been so pissed by the time he got there, but he would have had a good excuse. He would have been, you could tell he would have been patched up. Yeah. You know? I mean, like I honestly probably would have cried myself to sleep and then I would have been there whenever you got there. But that's not Kate's, that's not Kate's <laughs> that's jam. That's what I would have done too. That's not Kate's jam. <laughs> She's so. like, fuck you. You're not getting any dinner and I'm going to Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, um, Kate wants to feel indifferent about this revelation that Curran came to her with broken bones, but of course she can't. Yeah. I mean, she does. She already loves him. Yeah, you know? she does. Um, and so there is hope once again, and but now the ball is in her court yeah. to do something. Mm-hmm. All right? So... She calls in a favor to Jim to sneak her. This is going to. This is my showdown. Showdown to sneak into the keep while Kern is occupied. (laughs) And she borrows uh, Teddy Joe's flaming sword again, welds Kern's guest room shut, the slut hut, as we called it. And um and again his weight bar be- bench mm-hmm. bar, mm-hmm. um which I love how he says that was an expensive bench bar. Yeah, He's like custom all made up because it. he had like five hundred pounds of weights on that right. bar, which no regular bar can hold. That no much. person can really right, <laughs> except for Kern. Yeah, Kern's <laughs> maze balls, but he can bench a lot. You know what is also just like a tidbit. I always picture him as taller, but she says again and again how Kern's only like five foot ten or eleven. No way! Mm-hmm. Oh, I have to picture him taller. I know he just has such a big personality; it's yes. really hard to picture him. Yes. But they always say how Jim's six foot two and Kern's like five ten or five eleven. I can't even. I know, but I it's can't. nuts. Yeah, I find I that fascinating though. He's too big. His personality is too big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm adding inches. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and I don't mean that in a dirty way, but she I does. am. But that too. I'm going to add inches there too. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so Kern calls Kate at 2 a.m. that night and growls about the destruction and the catnip on his bed. He's like furious. Like, mm-hmm. what did you fucking do? I am totally, you know, kill you or whatever. Um, but he doesn't get it at first. But then he realizes slowly, <laughs> after he gets over his fury, what the message she was sending. And he tells her that she will clean up the catnip while she is naked. And, of course, she's like, uh, no. And your dreams, <laughs> and I know. buddy. But the courtship is back on. Yeah. That's what's important. Yeah, you know? it's back on. It's back right. and forth. This is typical for them. Yes. So Kate tells Andrea about what she did to Curran. Like, tells her about her <laughs> antics. And I Andrea, this. Yeah, Andrea says... <laughs> Andrea's like, like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. He's gonna retaliate. Cats are really weird. Cats are really weird about it. She even says something about like he'll he'll light your house on fire just because he (laughs) thinks it's funny. And so, (laughs) she's great. So and and Kate's like, no, but he didn't even get it. And she's like, oh no, he got it. I can smell him in your office. I smell his scent. He's already been here. Oh yeah, he's already been here. So they go around her office and they try to figure out what he did. What he did. And so so Kate, like they've been looking around. Kate sits at her desk and like immediately she gets a call from Curran who says, "Are you sitting?" And she says, "Yes." And he says, good. And then hangs up. And she's like, well, I love I love the way her mind works because she's like, well, if he wants me to sit, well, I'm going to stand. And That's so whenever right. she stands, the chair's glued to her butt. Yeah, she can't. 
Because her ass is glued to the, the chair. The chair comes up with her. It's great. And then at the most inconvenient moment, um, Simon comes into the office <laughs> because he has info on the parchment and tells her what he found. It's like a lot of Jewish lore. I love it. Like I it's do. cool. Oh it's my God. So it's so cool. much, so, so cool, cool things. I can't go into too much detail because it's a lot of detail. Yeah, read the book. You'll yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then says that she should check out the Jewish temple in Atlanta for more info. Yeah. They have like this this circle, this inner circle that could reveal stuff. And he's mm-hmm. like, I can't go because I kind of seduce some rabbis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I piss some people off yeah, when I seduce some yeah. rabbis. So they so won't let me come anyway, back. Yeah. That same night is her date with uh, Simon at Bernard's. And his <laughs> ulterior motive was to humiliate Curran by showing up at the restaurant with Kate and saying inflammatory things because he is protected by being in public. Like, he's just, like, being like, he doesn't really love you. He just right. wants to own you. We want what we can't have. Stuff along those lines, and right. it's pissing Curran off. And she's like, he can hear you. And he's like, oh, I know. Like, <laughs> It's he's across the room, but he can hear everything. It's you're basically saying. payback for something that happened in book three. That's why he's doing right, this. Right. So Kurt just does not care that this is in public and other people are here and like <laughs> the influential people of Atlanta are witnesses. <laughs> the look in his face. He's like ready to pounce. Like he's oh, yeah. he's coming across the room until oh, yes. the leader of the Atlanta people's uh, faction greets Kurt and he has to pump the brakes before he breaks. Yeah. Simon. He sort of like, like snaps out of it for a yeah. second. It's like okay. And even Kate says like that control scared her because the. Yeah. Mess amount of control it took to rein back that type of like animal instinct is like mm-hmm. astounding. Yeah. So 20 minutes later, Kate sees an opportunity <clears throat> to convince Simon to leave. Kern rips off his shirt, she sends a warrior form and pursues and Simon finally realizes that he's in trouble. He's, he's like, like, oh my God, he's shit. running after us. He doesn't even care that he's lost like all humanity. <laughs> She's like, you he's think? He's lost his mind, baby. Like, you think? <laughs> you, ta- you taunted him. And you think, what? Like, you idiot. Oh, my God. So Kate says, drop me off at the apartment and keep on fucking driving. Yeah. They're, like, tearing through town. And he, like, almost even runs over Kate in his haste to get away. (laughs) Such an asshole. Like, get out. Shoves her out. (laughs) So she lures her into her bedroom, and she kicks him upside the head. It is amazing. I love their little fight scene. scene. She Uh, Everything is so But then Kate, I meant Curran, you know, pins her against the wall, and then whispers in her ear that he misses her and do you miss me too oh god and says don't make me leave that part (laughs) jessen i love whenever don't make the guy is the vulnerable person in the relationship because most of the time majority i would say in real life majority women have to be the ones who admit their feelings first so this is very nice him making a move like that because it's hard for kate to admit her feelings it really is the juxtaposition of his supreme alphaness like i'm fucking coming for you and then Mm -hmm. when he finally corners her his willingness to just show his underbelly and just be like i miss you i miss you i you know please don't make me leave it is it's amazing it is beautiful i love them together beautiful so they finally have sex loads and loads of sex yeah like seven or eight times yes and <laughs> they're so cute in the morning though the morning after is just yes. beautiful i love how they're so domestic together but there's one snag kern wants her to move into the keep yeah since he orders her since orders her she is move. his mate. Like, this is what yeah. mates do. And I love how she's like, have you had mates before? And he's like, well, no, you only have one lovers. mate. And she's like, so you just made up, made up this rule on the fly. Yeah. And he's like, a- well, that's, you know, that's that's what beast lords <laughs> that's a, do. Yeah, that's a privilege of being yes, beast lord. exactly. I can make up rules right now. And that's a rule. Yep, yep, yep. So Kate knows that now he's thinking about her in terms of a mate. That mm-hmm. she will need to tell him who she is. Like, she cannot, if she wants a real relationship with him, she yeah. needs to come clean She's about to her parentage. Mm-hmm. So this is what she's thinking in her head. She says, all or nothing. Yeah. What I'm going to say is, hello, your fuzzy majesty. My name is Kate Daniels, daughter of Roland, builder of towers, <laughs> the living legend, and coincidentally, the man who is trying to eradicate you and your people. Yeah. Like, how's that going to go over? So she's very worried yeah, about this She reveal. doesn't want to move into the keep because she knows it's going to uh, jeopardize the safety of all I, of the Again, pack. again, she's, you know? she's like, wherever I am, the people around me are, are in danger. danger. Right. And so she just can't do that to This is why I love Kate. People. I'm obsessed with Kate. I love her. Yeah. So much. Okay. So apparently, Justin's got a girl crush. Uh, she was on my girl crushes. Yeah. <laughs> Should have been number one. Okay. So at the temple, we go to the temple. Okay. It is revealed we're taking the parchment, right? It is revealed the parchment contained the poem of Era. Okay. I'm about to read it. 
Here we go. I devastate the land and shatter it to dust. I crush the cities and turn them into waste. I crumble mountains and panic their wild beasts. I churn the sea and hold back its tides. I bring stillness of the tomb to nature's wild places. I reap the lives of humankind. None survive. I bring dark omens and desecrate holy places. I release demons into sacred dwellings of the gods. I ravage palaces of kings and send nations into mourning. I set ablaze the blooms of fields and orchards. I let evil enter. Boom! That last line. awesome. That last line is the epiphany for Kate. She's like, I know who this fucking is. Wow. Yeah. So So she knows now. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the temple is suddenly under attack from another dead mage who shows up. But Kate isn't surprised, of course. And, um, And now she knows what she's dealing with. We also see that in ancient Babylon era, also known as Nergal, is that how you pronounce it? I would say Nergal, so. god of plagues and chaos who has seven warriors, darkness, torch, beast, tremor, gale, deluge, and venom. Yeah. So okay. that's, these are the Those dead are the mages that we're dealing with. Right. And so we've seen, we've already seen some of, you know, right. Yeah. So she fights Trimmer and before he dies, he bites Kate and says in Era's voice, you taste a family, little squirrel. Oh, oh, oh. It's, so creepy. It's, so awesome. it's creepy awesome. Oh god, it's amazing. Yes. So um Dolly Which, Dolly She's a shapeshifter. She's a, shape-shifter. She's shape-shifter. a half blind shapeshifter she's tiger. Half blind white Siberian tiger or whatever. Who, who's a vegetarian and yes. hates blood. <laughs> she hates blood and she loves driving and she can't fucking see the road. I okay? love her so much. She's, she's always like character crashing and speeding into things. It's, it's amazing. Hilarious. I'm so sorry. I, I just had to, awesome. I just had to love Dolly. Oh, Dolly's adorable. So Dolly picks up Kate and she tells her to warn Jim about era. And she even says in ancient times, she walked before Roland's army. She'd pass through the pa- place in the next morning. There would be a, nothing but corpses. A few days later, once the land aired out, Roland's troops would roll in. We know that Roland wants to do away with the pack. Era is the perfect person to do that. She has the power to panic animals and it works on shapeshifters. So, so that's like a big deal. That's what right. in the first Steel Mary attack, that's why all the shapeshifters <clears throat> ran. And then they end up by turning wild. Right. They like forgot their humanity, which right. is like even worse than loop. Like loop is a bad thing to be. Like you retain humanity, but like wild is like they you're turn like into an like animal. savage beast yes, mode. Yeah. Not just animals, but like savage. Yes, exactly. You know? think rabid you know mm-hmm. so uh, she gets back to her apartment she beats era there and they have a nice uh family chat <laughs> which this was my backup showdown scene yes. actually yeah but this is my and era? yes with her and era because it's such an interesting such an interesting conversation enlightening about era's character mm-hmm. and also enlightening about like the family that kate comes from right and it just we're getting a background on era but Era is Roland's sister. So right. it's kind of like we, it's, we um, know. Kate's aunt. We can kind of, you know, speculate about what Roland's thoughts because this is legit his sister. This right. is kind of his like, and you she's know, been around him team. longer than Kate. Exactly. Kate's not. Kate so only knows I like, what she's learned. I find this fascinating. I find this conversation fascinating. Mm-hmm. They include like. Era talks about her sons, and yeah. one of them's like Samson. Like one of them's Ajax from. It's amazing the 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 little breadcrumbs that they mm-hmm. include in that. It just is such she, a fun. Yeah, scene. she points out the similarities between their aunt and niece, and tells her yes. why the Atlantic Pact must be destroyed. Um, of course, they kind of provoke each other. They're both kind of they're doing this antagonistic thing, mm-hmm. like insult each other, insulting back and forth. each other back and forth. Kate's like, Mm-mm, I, my aunt's a bitch. You yeah, know? <laughs> I hate her. Um, and Kate is willing to sacrifice herself to kill Era, but is snatched by a shapeshifter, a crocodile shapeshifter. Which this which is, is kind of so like cool. a background, a background story in the background that we just couldn't, yeah. you know. Yeah, she had like seen this old lady in the in the street and sort of saved her from some people earlier in the mm-hmm. in the thing. But now she's like shape shifted into this like fierce crocodile and is like crawling away with her. Yeah, and she's like, you can't fight her, and then drops her off at the right. pack safe yes. house, and she she's like, bye bye. Exactly. So she brings her to safety to one of the pack safe houses. So there's just there's a whole lot that happens right here. All right, the order while she's at the safe house, the order is attacked. They kill another one of Era's warriors, and then she gets a call that the wolf safe house is under attack. Like, everybody's under fucking attack. Yeah, okay? it, it, it's a so lot going on. Everything is, like, it's it's going, like, insane. Mm-hmm. Um, Ted, who is the leader of the Atlanta Order and Prejudice <laughs> Dick Wad, he is totally, I he's hate a, him. He's, he's such an asshole. He's so hateful. I know. He forbids her to go, but, of course, she quits and goes anyway. She's like, yeah, fine, she I fucking quit. Yeah, she can't let people die. Yeah, she's like, I'm not going to let people die. 
just, just to, because to keep you my don't job. think that they're like human like yeah because yeah, he's away. like he, he's, he's basically saying the shapeshifters aren't worth her sacrifice exactly and she's like fuck you yeah you know big middle awesome. finger double yeah. middle finger i love it fuck off man so the at the man. keep <laughs> Fast forwarding through all of the interesting things that happened there. Yeah. At the keep, she unloads her fears and her worries about what happened at the safe house and to Curran. And he tells her about what happened to his family. Mm-hmm. So his family had a history. They they were kind of like reclusive. They lived by themselves instead of like in a whole pack. No, this is such a unique, sad story. Yes. I and so it. loops, which we talked about, which are which are shapeshifters who've had like an overload of the virus called like V and mm-hmm. it kind of controls them, makes them savage and they do have human um, capacity to like understand, but they're very vicious and they, they, they love killing. And it's just like, they're horrible. They don't, they don't follow rules like shapeshifters do. Right. So his whole family was murdered by them and then he was taken in by Mahone. So we get all of that background information mm-hmm. And he's trying to make her feel better about what happened at the safe house. And she tells Curran that she is Roland's daughter. This is where it yes, really comes out. Yes. And that she will never be safe. She will always be hunted. And that any children they would have, because he's talking about children in the future. I know. It's so sad. They will always be in danger. And he takes mm. it in stride and says, bring it on. Oh, Which I I'm love like, it. Fuck yes, Curran. I know, because he loves her. Yes. This is just like, this is, he's like, no, I have you. I'm keeping you. This is it. I yeah. don't fucking care. Yeah. Like, I'm strong. Oh, Let Roland bring it. So good. So the next day, Ted, who's the the leader of the order, plans to make a big show mm-hmm. of luring Era because he thinks that he can hit back at her and show what a big, tough person he is right. and the order is by bringing in some help from the other orders around the country. Well, Kate knows this is a stupid yeah, plan. Like in the like, middle of the city. He's trying to make like a show about it, and she's like, mm-hmm. you don't want a crowd because Era panics people? You yeah, because people are like, like sitting up in the ruins watching like the so like dumb. it's a big So dumb. You don't want show. it in a panic. You don't want it in a public place. Mm-hmm. So the trap for Era backfires as, as she knows <laughs> that it's going to happen because right. Era shows up wearing blood armor. Which is a trait of Kate's family. This is what they do. They use necromatic magic and blood armor is legit. They use their own blood or any other blood and they create this impenetrable armor with it's it, which unbelievable. is in- so cool. It is unbelievable. It's so, so cool. She just like nukes the whole, the, yeah. the agent of the aura. Like she's just like, <laughs> whatever. That's that's the best you can do. Like you, you, ch- children. Yeah. Era behaves exactly as predicted and she creates pan- panic down the well-lit path to the casino because she likes it audience right so kate wears her down while curran takes care of her remaining warriors but when curran gets near era era erects a ward that traps them all together and curran mm-hmm. and kate can't like get away circle. right exactly and so it's it's era curran kate and darkness which is the last remaining of her warriors yes. and darkness has the power to make shapeshifters wild i know and i love this part because This was a great added mystery that Alona Andrews had is that she knew what everybody else could do, but nobody knew what darkness would do. Yeah, it was like, what what does darkness do? What is darkness going to do? So we were kind of waiting for it. And of course, that's the last big standoff is darkness is now trapped in there. And then we find out what he does and it's horrible. It's like making Kern wild. You know, exactly and like danger all, to her. Of, like all of his rational thought is slowly slipping away. But I love the fact that he's so strong that he fights through it. He kills darkness, and he's still going wild, and still through it since. Era let down her guard enough to mm-hmm. remove her blood helmet. He jumps and he pounces on her head oh and delivers God. like a big blow to the side of her head. So this creates an opportunity for Kate to have the killing blow. Mm-hmm. And so Era's parting words to Kate, very sinister, very, yes. very, oh very just chilling, says... Live long, child. Live long enough to see everyone you love die, suffer like me. Thanks, Auntie. Yeah. I would never say that to you, Jessen. No. Oh, my God. She would never talk to me this way. So Era is gone, but so is the current that we know. Kate blacks out. She doesn't know what happens after this. Yes. So this is where it gets some seriousness. She wakes up at the keep to see Jim, Derek, and Mahone trying to tell Kate to get away from Curran, who might be Lou. And he's, it's been three hours since he brought her there, which is not a good sign. He's still not speaking. He's still like in this 
wild state. Yeah, like if he would have come out of it, he would have come out of it like immediately. Like you don't just stay in your animal form for an right. extended amount of right. period They're for like, no there's reason. Something, there's something wrong. Yeah, like he may never be human again. Right. So Kern is pacing around her and won't let anyone else near her. But he's not hurting her. No. But he's still like sort of like. For three hours. Like, yeah. Protecting he's like, her. He's like pacing around. Yeah. I love it. It's so cool. Me too. I know. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Barons and Matt. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. When mm-hmm. Barons is in beast mode. Agree. <laughs> beast <laughs> mode. Beast mode. Pissing a circle around her so yeah. nobody will come oh. close. <laughs> so great. So true. Sorry. Oh, got a dark fever tangent. Yeah. Okay. So she tells them to shut the door and leave them, you know? And of course, they're like, what? But she doesn't back down from his snarls or, aren't, you know, he's like. He's he's, he's huge. huge. Like huge. warrior forms are like seven and eight foot. Right. And his like teeth are like arm length. Like they're. Right. <laughs> they're just four a ginormous, crazy. like saber toothy, yeah. you know, giant lion. Um, instead, she hugs him and begs him to come back. She so says, sad. why the hell don't you ever listen? I fucking hate you. Don't you dare die on me because I need to kill you with my bare hands. I love it. Like she just like talking to him, talking, yes. talking, talking. Yeah. So she just keeps talking and she feels, she feels his fur recede and he says, not dead yet and passes out. So now he's human. Thank God. Yes. But yes. now he's comatose. But now he's in a coma, okay, <laughs> which is which causes all kinds of shit. Uh, problems. Problems uh, for Kate, God, okay? I can't catch a break, man. I know. So three days later, he still hasn't woken up, and the pack council is debating whether or not Kate should be able to stay since she isn't pack and they aren't formally mated. Yeah. They're like, they even send people to like sort of attack her and stuff. Well, that's after. Yeah. So she is pissed, but... Barabbas. Is that his name? Barabbas. It reminds me of... Yeah. Yeah. Barabbas and Jezebel. These are Aunt B's minions. Which I love Aunt B. I love Aunt B and I love Barabbas and I love Jezebel. Like there's so many characters we had not even touched on, but I'm so so sorry, but we just don't have time. I know. Sorry, but they are awesome. They're a great tribe. Oh, God, I love them. Okay. So they tell her that she can't be challenged unless she issues one first. Okay. <laughs> this is Kate's entrance. I love this. So she literally kicks the, kicks the doors open, tells a loud mouth yapping alpha who thinks that Kern is done for to shut his big mouth. Yeah. It's so like this is her funny. entrance. Every, everyone's like, be diplomatic. Yeah, and be diplomatic. she's like, comes in guns blazing. Be she's like, fuck this. No. I'm coming in. And she just like, is like, you know, she yeah. goes off. He asks if, the, if, if that is a challenge. And Kate says, yes. <laughs> She then kills him and his alpha mate quickly and tells everyone that if they try to take her away from Kern, she will kill everybody. Oh, yeah. It, this was so badass because she's it like, you're so not great. fucking removing me from my and, mates. And what's so interesting about it, because we, throughout the novel, we get a sense that not only is Kate skilled as like a warrior, hand-to-hand yeah. combat, and in swords, she also has a large reservoir of magic. Well, during this, she's not even using that shit. She's only yes. using her physical, like shapeshifters are physically superior in strength right. to humans, to yes. whatever. She's not very gifted in like strength-wise. Mm-hmm. She might have magical abilities, but she doesn't have strength like animals, right. like the shapeshifters do. She's not even using this shit. This is she's not even using her magic. This is just her will this is just alone. Her. This is just like she's uh, the badass. Burn his fucking mind back off. Yes. I love how Barabbas was like, "Way to play it cool there." Every idiot who wants to make a name for himself will be gunning for you now. Yeah, she's so like, this you is just when issued the biggest challenge yeah. to the entire keep. Thank you. So this is when they start coming after her yes. for the next two weeks. Kate fends off challenge after challenge until finally, while she is telling. <laughs> A comatose current about her hectic day, he responds with a solution to a problem and is awake. Yes. Yes. So it's like awesome. for two weeks she's just been like reading yeah, to she's him, been fi- constantly yes. fighting and getting patched up and fighting again, talking to Curran yeah. because whenever she was kind of passed out for a couple days in like previous novels, she was like, I heard voices, so it's important. I want him to know he's not alone. Yeah. And I just love that whole dynamic. I she's did. like, I'm not giving up on him. I don't care if everybody's like, he's never gonna wake up. Like I'm I'm yes. And even when she's not happen. there, she has um what's his Derek. name? Derek read, read. to read mm-hmm. to him. So he's yes. constantly not alone yes you know and hears voices of family and friends yes. and i love that and so i love it when so when he wakes up y'all <laughs> he enters the next pack council i love this so much he is so fucking pissed off that they didn't support kate 
And um, that so soon after he was injured, they started tearing down what he had built up. Yeah, he's he like, was like, okay, I'm like in a coma fuck? for two seconds. You know? And like everything starts going to shit. Like I took years. Like Kern became alpha and started building the pack when he was fucking 15. Yeah. And he was like, all this shit that I've built for 15 years. And you're tearing it down in yes. days. And then you're attacking my mate. Yes. Like what like, the fuck what is, is going wrong with on? You? He's you know? pissed because this is supposed to be his like safe haven that he created. Right. This is exactly why right. he wanted the pack as first safe place for his mate. And his mate wasn't even safe. She wasn't safe there like, at all. Oh, it's like, so thank terrible. God Kate, thank God Kate was strong enough to defend. Them. I mean, she could have died yeah. just. While he was out, yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. then oh my god, he would have like burned the whole fucking city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, it wouldn't have been good. It, it wouldn't have been good. Not have been pretty at all. No. <laughs> so the epilogue ends with Curran mm-hmm. buying Kate a building to base yes! an office out of. Oh my god, it's so. And adorable. I love this so much because he's like, I really, I cost you the pack, cost you a job. Mm-hmm. So this is for you. You can make it whatever you want. You can make it another guild, another order. I don't fucking care. I like this, this is yours. Do with it what you want because Kate likes helping people. She likes solving these problems. She's a strong person so she can go head to head with these magical entities that keep on cropping up in the I, city. I, yeah, and I also like that he's gifting her like her own in- independence he respects her independence oh yeah he's like you go crazy you can't just yeah exactly you can't can't just just be my mate i think keep doing whatever he knows that he's like and and he loves her for that and he was like as long as you're free every single wednesday night to hear petitions with me because that's what happens at the keep right other than that this is free reign whatever you make your own hours do whatever so she names it cutting edge investigations (laughs) which i love that so cute and we'll see a lot more of this this business in the next few books it's so yes. amazing okay so so many characters weren't even touched on like Mahone we touched on a little bit Aunt yeah. B who Aunt B is like my favorite and I would name my child after her yeah um, and Derek I love Derek we Derek has Derek and Julie we didn't touch on them at all they're <gasps> big players especially in the later novels and um, Jennifer the wolf alpha she'll yeah. crop up again there's some major stuff happening in this book that has a lot of impact on the other books. Um, Naima, who is mm-hmm. the alligator shapeshifter, and Hugh de Ambry, we really didn't touch on him. It's just yeah. insane the amount of people that we didn't even talk about. And it's it's amazing. The world that she creates is amazing. And I'm just like, oh, in awe. In awe. So much, oh, yeah. so much, so much to unpack. So much impact. Maybe we'll do all of them one day. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ambitious. So. Yeah. Well, we love Alona Andrews. We this do. Is a, She's. It's a fascinating world. It's so well told. I mean, her sto- their storytelling abilities are insane. 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 You know what's insane? What? Them taking a villain and creating a series about the villain. That's just fucking villain. amazing. It's, I haven't read it yet. Have you read it? Of course you've read it. What am I thinking? I have not read it yet. Timeline <laughs> wise, timeline wise, she created, they created a spinoff called The Iron and Magic, or yeah. maybe that's the name of the book. The cover is really cool. It's amazing, beautiful. And the main character is a villain of this series. And in the timeline, you should read it before the last lo- novel in the Kate Daniel series. So you should, it's like, Still within the Kate Daniels timeline, you really do need that information for book, the mm-hmm. last book. It's amazing. I'm like, I went in, I was not excited about the spinoff at all. I'm like, why would you do this? I'm like, <laughs> why? See, I love that. I'm I like, love I hate anti-hero this person. type I'm characters. like, I hate this. No. Yeah. Oh, you kind of I sad, hate bad. this person. Well, see, I haven't seen him get really bad yet because I haven't gotten that far in the series. Yeah, because we didn't see him a lot yet. But his series <laughs> is amazing and I love him. So it's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> It's very weird. That's just a talented, talented author. Oh, That's what it is. just wait. You got two more books to see what he does. I'm but, so excited. Oh, oh, it's amazing. There's so much that happens okay. and there's so many potential spinoffs. Okay, so we hope that you enjoyed today's episode. We look forward to the next one where we'll be discussing Dirty Exes by mm. Rachel Van Dyken. Love it. Thanks so much for listening. This goes out to all the fangirls. Life's better with a little H-E-A. 